AI is taking over, they say. Developers are going to be obsolete, they say. Apps are built in minutes. Entire startups powered by algorithms. Sounds like the future, right? But does the current wave of LLM-based AI tools really change anything fundamental about software development? Come along on this journey and I'll show you why I believe that AI will change nothing for us as software developers. Just a quick disclaimer up front, since I only know enough about software development and not enough about other industries, that's why this channel focuses on software development after all. I don't know how this AI part will affect graphic designers, musicians, writers. No idea if AI is going to eliminate their jobs. As a layman, so far I don't see it. AI generated graphics look mediocre, the music sounds mediocre, and so is the writing. If you want something really good, the statistical average just doesn't seem to cut it. Another important disclaimer is that AI, for the purpose of this video, refers to the usage of large language models, or LLMs. AGI, or Artificial General Intelligence, is something completely different. And yes, that would lead us straight into the realm of science fiction with machines being as intelligent and likely more so than humans. By now, you've likely seen enough funny memes on current LLMs demonstrating that we're nowhere near that. And last but not least, as a mere human, I'm prone to make mistakes in judgment. Let me know in the comments if you know this I did and help me correct those mistakes. You have certainly seen your fair share of AI successes. Thousands of videos that show you how to create an application in just a few minutes. Yeah, I did want to. I'm not going to say that this isn't true. Quite the contrary. If you haven't tried it yourself, you definitely should. It's an amazing experience and we can indeed create prototypes faster than ever before using AI. This has and will continue to have massive consequences for the startup scene. When you're on a ticking clock against your money running out and needing to get that product out to the market, when you need to run a lot of experiments quickly to find your market fit, LLMs will be a crucial instrument. People are trying to dial this up as far as they can to go from a prototype to include deployment like Replit agents, and we will see a rise of many more small applications being created. Of course, most of those you will never even hear about. Most of the rest will vanish without a trace, and a select few may hit a nerve and become popular. Though all of that is news, really. Before AI, we already had way too many new small applications. Try something like the Steam Store, where we've had an almost endless supply of mediocre indie games. A real gem here and there, but generally just a lot of uninteresting games. AI doesn't change that fundamentally. It only allows even more people to create applications in even less time. Does that somehow imply that we software developers are no longer needed? I don't see that as a logical conclusion at all. As I said, we have a history of making it easier and easier to create software. Low code and no code tools have been around for decades with the same essential claim that you don't need a developer anymore. Yet here we are, needing more and more software developers, year over year. While the software industry isn't able to look back on history like traditional sciences, we do have almost a century of improvements. And sometimes remembering that puts it into perspective. For example, the hype and adoption curve of AI. We've seen that before with the initial rise of the internet and the dot-com burst, or more recently with cryptocurrencies. Each time, we have seen a lot of excitement, but eventually the storm calmed down and we ended up with a new shiny tool finding its place among the rest. AI is said to make developers way more productive. And a lot of people say it's not going to be AI replacing you, but another developer using AI. Guess what? We had that one before as well. 
If you got stuck on punch cards, the assembler and C programmers would replace you. If you got stuck on that, the high level developers would replace you with C++, Java and the like. We have constantly, for decades, been on a journey to make development easier and faster for all sorts of aspects. Take another example, how we edit our source code. We used to have very simplistic editing capabilities. Then strong general editors like VI or Emacs made us way faster. Eventually, the integrated development environments or IDEs would replace them, from custom vendor-specific ones to those early-day IDEs like NetBeans or Eclipse. Then another wave of improvements happened, and we got the more modern IDEs like Visual Studio Code or JetBrains IDEs. Now you can say that AI-assistant IDEs like Cursor are changing everything, or just recognize them as the next logical evolution of this chain of ever-improving tools. And of course, they don't magically make you better. You still need to learn to work with them, just like any other tool. And same as ever before, you won't keep up if you don't know the tools you work with well. Here's an example with some crazy strong features in JetBrains IDs that will also make you a way better developer. But overall, bigger, more powerful tools are just going to become the new norm. Similarly, every time we as developers get bigger and better tools, we were able to develop bigger and better systems. Imagine any straightforward web application running somewhere in a managed Kubernetes cluster in the cloud. And now imagine going back to developing that same application with VI and assembler code. You just wouldn't. The crazy awesome part of our work is that we are driving these systems to the very limits that we are capable of handling. Better tools just means we can go even further. So yes, in a sense, AI may well change our entire profession, but on a bigger scale, it's just another tool that we'll learn, eventually master, and use to build bigger and better until we find its successor. Another way to look at this is how, supposedly, AI solves our fundamental challenges. There's the first challenge, building the wrong application. The software industry has been struggling with this since forever. How do you find out what your users need? How do you make sure you're understanding the requirements in the same way as they were meant by the other person? Most of our work after you left the very beginner stage is not even the development of a system. It's spending time and energy on making sure you're even building the right thing. LLMs will build whatever you tell them to build. No questions asked. Just like a compiler or an IDE, they are completely ignorant on whether or not this is a good idea. Sure, you can use it to evaluate requirements, find inconsistencies, brainstorm questions to ask your users, etc. But then we're back at using a better tool to solve the still unsolved fundamental challenge of building the right thing. Another challenge is avoiding errors. Following the first challenge, each unclarity, ambiguity or misunderstanding will yield errors. On top of that, we have more or less simple programming errors. The very technology an LLM is based on that is producing code via statistical likelihood means it's unaware of semantics and thus highly likely to mess up. If that sounds too abstract, Go check out my video and see in action how every usage of, a, of AI leads to more problems. Again, this isn't really the fault of the tool, but we've been doing that for decades. The more code we added, the more errors as well. If anything, AI with its lack of understanding is a step back for that challenge. The third challenge is high quality. We know as a fact how important high quality of our code base is. We write tests to ensure it stays high. We perform code refuse, use static analysis, and so on. AI, on the other hand, neither cares nor understands this. It will happily inform you that the code it just gave you is really bad, if you just ask it about the quality. In fact, we already have data from GitHub that shows this decline of quality due to AI is happening. 
As I regularly explain in my clean code courses, we, even as experts, cannot see high quality if it was standing right in front of us. Bad quality is easy to spot. Good quality, though, is an elusive thing we strive for because we know it's worth it. If you look at the current AI usages, you will see that it mostly sacrifices all our hard-earned lessons. It doesn't strive for high quality. Averageness is its agenda. It doesn't generate tests unless you tell it to do so, in which case meaningless, thoughtless and generally mediocre tests get created, which just add to your technical debt even further. So like before, AI isn't solving the challenge itself and instead makes it an even harder one. The final challenge is how we as developers can get better. We never have enough developers. We as human beings want to develop proficiency. And I believe this is one of the toughest problems that AI is facing. On the one hand, you can use AI to learn things. It generates a syllabus, explanations, it tests your knowledge, but only if you are committed to using it for that purpose. In any other case, the AI couldn't care less. It'll do the work. And just as you could watch a master craftsman or artist create an amazing piece of work, you wouldn't be able to replicate that. You may have learned hardly anything from watching that work happen. Consider my last video in which I built a Next.js app using AI. I still have no clue about Next.js. I couldn't write a single line of code with or for it. I couldn't even recognize Next.js code. As such, because I didn't even need to look at any code the AI generated at all. Now, all the previous discussions tell us that we haven't solved the fundamental challenges. So eventually, we will have to look into the work of the AI. Currently, that's about a minute or two down the road. Maybe AI advancements can extend that time window. But when you go beyond that, you need that same old knowledge and understanding. You need to be an expert at software development. Unfortunately, using AI to build software is like watching an artist draw. It doesn't help much in growing your own drawing skills. Current seniors have very little struggle with that because we already went through the hard work of learning, of having spent those elusive 10,000 hours to achieve mastery. But as a junior, the AI tools are like a cheat code. They give you something immediately, but you won't be better for it. You better start using your chatbot to learn about imposter syndrome and the Dunning-Kruger effect. So here we are. These are exciting times, just like any time in the history of software development, really. So go ahead and learn the shiny new AI tool. Use it, abuse it, find its limits, its weaknesses and strengths. And eventually, you'll step back and see it there, in your toolbox, worn and used, among all the other tools of your trade. And hopefully, you can look back with enjoyment. Have fun developing.